Welcome to the Land of House channel. I'm Seth. Today I have the Yoshopo Y3000 power station. This has a lithium iron phosphate battery powered by Catel, which means you can charge this thing down to 14 degrees Fahrenheit. That's better than the average 32 degree lithium iron phosphate battery. This has an AC output, pure sine wave of 3000 watts, and a battery capacity of 2355 watt hours. Let's go ahead and take a look at this power station. Also, we want to take a look at its uh, solar panel over here, and it's also got power cord and connecting cord as well. So, all right, let's go ahead and jump into the overview of this power station. The Ashopo Y3000 is shipped in two different parts. Over here, you've got the inverter, and over here is the battery. So, let's go ahead and take a look at the inverter portion first, and then we will step over here to the battery. Let's start off with the inverter first. Up on the top, it's got the powered by Ketel and also the Yoshopo logo. It also has a carrying handle that lays flat. Now it's important that these lay flat because you can stack these units. On the front of the unit, it's got two AC outlets, 120 volt at 20 amp for a total of 3000 watts between the two of these. It's got a nice big color screen on the front, the on off button, a USB a down here, two of those, a USB-C over here. It's got a 12 volt, so you can plug that up to uh, either run a compressor or something like that. It's got a car charging port down here, 12 volt, and you can also charge through an Anderson plug over here. All right, if I were to spin this over here, you can see it's got a fan for dissipating heat. If we turn to the back over here, it's got the AC in, so you can plug this up to a wall. Has some information about the unit. And over here is where you connect your battery to the inverter. And then on this side, it's just got more slits for letting air pass through. Now, moving on to the battery. Once again, on the top, it's got the same type of handle. It also has little rubber feet to keep the inverter from sliding around. It's got the Yoshopo logo on the front, powered by Catel. Now, I did notice there was a little bit of shipping damage to this unit right here. Doesn't seem to be affecting anything besides uh, just being cosmetic. Turn over here, nothing, uh, no ventilation or anything on that. Turn to the back. It does have the other port for allowing that uh, to plug up to the inverter. It has the same information on the sticker down here as you can find on the inverter. Over here, it's just blank. Now on the bottom, it does have some rubber feet. I don't know how well you can see that, but that helps this unit not slide around. Now in order for the inverter and battery to work together, you can just simply place the inverter on top of the unit like that. Now you don't have to, you can keep this alongside if you want it to be a shorter profile, as long as this cable right here will be able to reach and connect between the two. Connecting the inverter to the battery is pretty simple using the included cable. It does have a couple of guide holes up here, so you can only plug this up in one direction, just like that. And the other one, same thing down here. They snap into place and make a good connection. Yoshopo also has a solar panel system for this unit, and it has the Anderson output. So Let's go ahead and open this up and see if we can't get some solar going into this power station. You can see that it folds out into four different sections. Nice and big here. Unzipping the pouch over here, I can pull out the Anderson cable. And can simply plug this up right here on the unit. Matching red to red and black to black. Once I've plugged this in, the screen immediately turns on and it starts to charge. All right, we've seen the unit charge now off of a solar panel. Let's go ahead and take this inside the shop and we'll see it charge through the AC, which is gonna be using this plug right here on the back and also this standard power plug right here. Now we saw with the solar power that it will auto on the unit whenever solar is detected. Let's see if the same thing happens here with the AC power. So I've got it plugged up to the wall over there. Let's go ahead and plug this up right here. All 
All right, so got that plugged up. No, I do not believe that it auto turns on here. So let's go ahead and hold down the power button. All right, here we go. Turning it on. It clicks right here to show that AC power is activated. Looks like we're gonna be charging at about 1500 watts. I was gonna charge the Yashopo from the house power, but then I thought it's a nice day out. Let's go ahead and do the rest of this charging by solar. Now, if you have to carry the inverter and the battery together, it's kind of awkward. And so Yashopo has also sent over their uh, little cart here. So you just press down and it will lock this bar in place. And that lets you slide this around uh, as you need to. So let's go ahead and pick up the battery and place this in here. There we go. Seem to do just fine. And then also get the inverter placed in here. There we go. I can go ahead and get the power plugged up. On the back of the cart, there is a little Velcro strap. And I believe that's designed to go around the handle and keep that from uh, falling off there. So basically, it's just a little cart. And now I can tilt this backwards, swing it around here. So tilt that, and I can cart this around without having to carry both the inverter and the battery at the same time. So, all right, let's move over here to the sun and uh, charge this unit up today. So last time I saw around 160 watts. So. It'd be nice to see closer to the 200 here whenever I get this fully opened up. All right, got those panels set up. Now it's only 9.30 in the morning, so looks like we're seeing about 86 to, well, there's 88 watts. So, all right, whenever this gets a little bit more sun, I will come back out here and show you what this gets up to. Should be hitting somewhere around 180 to 190 with these panels. I've got the solar panel turned directly into the sun, but there is a light haze today, which means we're not pulling quite as much as I would like to have seen. So if I move down here to the power station, let's take a look at the power coming in. I'm seeing between 100 and 109 watts coming in. I've now charged the battery on this power station through the AC and solar, so we know that those work very well. Let's do an AC discharge here. Now this unit has a 2,355 watt hour battery. And so if uh, I hook up a heater here, we can time the discharge and see how well this thing does. I've got a kilowatt meter here and that will let me keep track of the time and the output. So I'm gonna plug that up right there. Let's go ahead and turn the unit on. I'm also gonna keep a uh, stopwatch going. So if I miss something, I can uh, can keep track both ways. All right, so the unit turns on right away. I've got my fan set to max, or my heater set to max, but it's off right now. So let me also do a full reset on here. Okay, I'll plug this up. I'm also going to get my stopwatch going here. All right, let's go ahead and turn this up to max. Push start here. All right, this heater is running at uh, 1,320 roughly watts. The time remaining on the display says an hour and 41 minutes. So let's see how accurate that is. Now to find the efficiency, let's go into the calculator and see what the numbers say that this should run at. So if you've got 2,355 watt hours times 0.85 divided by the watts of this, which are 1,320, This says an hour and a half, so 1.5 hours. The kilowatts showing 1,220 watts, so 100 watts less. So I wonder if the power station itself has uh, about 100 watts being consumed through the inverter. But anyway, all right, let's time this. Come back in about an hour and a half. At approximately an hour and 15 minutes, we are at 25% on the battery still running fairly consistent at 1,330 or so. 
and then here we got 1225 on that display so things are going pretty smooth here we'll see if we get this last uh, 15 minutes in here to be the hour and a half so this right here is showing 24 minutes left we'll see how close we get there getting close to the end of this battery here we've got five percent left an hour 34 on that and well almost an hour 34 there as well and let's see what we got here we've used 1.92 kilowatts very cool one nice thing to see is that this power station is putting out full watts even at two percent i've seen others that will drop the power down the closer it gets to zero but this one is continuing to put out that 1330 approximately so if you have an application that requires full power, then it's nice to know you have full power on full battery. All right, we've used almost two kilowatt hours here and we've got 1% left and our time has passed the hour and a half. We're now at an hour and 37 minutes. So, yep, this thing has passed my expectations and so far is doing well. It's been sitting on 1% now for a while and the uh, timer here on the display is stopped, but we're still uh, pushing out power. There we go. The unit just turned off. Time is an hour 41. I charged the power station back up to 44% so we can do some testing with the DC side here. So we'll go ahead and plug this little air compressor in. All right, so whenever I push this button, we should see it turn on. Ooh, nope. So what do we have here? 12 volt. All right, I don't think that this is able to handle this uh, air compressor here. I'm not sure what the power consumption is of that. All right, well, that didn't work. Let's see about uh, charging a drone. I'm gonna plug up to a USB here. All right, that's starting to charge right away, so that's good. I've also got a cell phone that I use with this drone, so let's plug that up also and see if it will charge. Yep, that's beginning to charge as well. All right, so those work. This air compressor must require more amperage than this outlet is able to produce here. Okay, a few minutes later, the display has stopped showing output. The drone is now full, which is good. And this phone, let's see what it's showing. Yep, also 100%, so very nice. All right, DC, uh, USB at least, seems to be working just fine. All right, well, I think that's gonna conclude the testing of the Yashopo Y3000 power station here. So uh, let's talk about it real quick. I've tested this out now for a week and every function or feature has worked well. I did not check on the amperage for the DC right here, but it would not run the compressor I was trying to run. Uh, so first of all, it did have a little crack on it from being shipped, which did not affect the battery whatsoever. It's just a cosmetic issue. Um, if I were to have purchased this unit, I probably would have requested a replacement um, just being uh, the cost that this thing is, it would be nice to have that uh, repair. Um, as far as your AC output goes, actually performed better than I was anticipating. So that is a big thumbs up on that. The display is very basic, but shows you what you need to know. The input and the output on the uh, watts there. It is able to charge at 1500 watts, which is definitely nice. And uh, USBs performed perfectly. I charged up those drones, no issues whatsoever. The um, wheels on this little cart, one of them was slightly bent from shipping, and so I just set it on the ground and bent it over a little bit, and it has worked ever since. Um, definitely nice to have the cart if you're going to be rolling this around uh, a lot, So, but I'd recommend that your ground be pretty level because this is a heavy power station. Um, the cart also gives you the option of keeping both of these together without having to just carry one at a time, which is very doable. Um, just pull that handle up and you're good to go. Nice clear display is definitely good. It has charging through AC power and through solar, which is good. 
You can also connect this to your car and charge it up that way. So all of those seem to work just fine. The display, I think, um, is also good. It shows all the information that you would need. So the things that I would improve about this unit would be to beef up the cartwheels a little bit, and then I would also uh, increase the amperage output on that uh, car output there, and then perhaps uh, a little bit more foam packaging to make sure this doesn't get damaged in shipping. If you want to check out this power station, I'll have a link in the description down below. I'm Seth Johnson with Landa House, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.